Hello everyone, welcome to another video to crack open the secrets of service now. In this video, we will be discussing on one of the important and critical concept of sys ID. Sys IDs are 32 bit characters that make records unique in service now. So each and every record. This video is for admins and the developers, but also for the end users to understand how beautifully this ServiceNow platform has been developed. That there are no two sys IDs same globally across all the ServiceNow instances. What I mean is if you have a personal developer instance and you create a new record and new sys ID is generated but that sys ID will not be same to any of the clients, any of the personal developer instances or anyone. So it's totally unique. This is really amazing that how ServiceNow came up with this concept to make sys IDs unique globally. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Hardit Singh and if you are liking my content, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button. The agenda of our video is what is sys ID and why it is needed, how developers need that. After that, we will see nine ways to retrieve sys IDs in ServiceNow. Then we have a bonus section. There is a couple of more concepts on sys ID, how we can make sys IDs more available to everyone. So stick around till the last of the video. But if you want to jump to any of these topics directly, the link to each topic is given in the description. First of all, the introduction. What is a sys ID? Sys ID is a short form of system identifier and it is a unique 32 character code that identifies each and every record in the platform. So it is unique throughout the platform and I also said that it is unique throughout the whole world. If there are thousands of instances of service now, every sys ID which would be generated will be unique. It doesn't depend if they are on the same platform or not. So what that means is it's just like a fingerprint for your data. Similar to your fingerprint which is unique globally even if there are millions and trillions of people, your fingerprint would be always unique. Similarly. This sys ID will be unique throughout all the instances of ServiceNow. These sys IDs are associated with each and every record. That's what it says in the second part of this statement, whether it's a ticket, asset or a user. So any type of record, a sys ID will be definitely assigned to each record. Why developers use it? They use the sys ID in their code to refer to the records. So for example, if I have an assignment group, I want to assign tickets directly to that through my code. As a developer, what I can do is I can say if this is the condition, assign this ticket to this assignment group. However, in future and this happens often in organizations that the name of the assignment groups changes very frequently. What other way we have is we can refer to the sys ID of the assignment group instead of the name because the sys ID will always remain same for that assignment group. Even that name is changed again and again. It doesn't affect that and it will be same and unique throughout the entire lifetime of that service now instance. I hope that makes sense now. Now we will go to the first way of retrieving the sys ID and that is copy sys ID from the form view. I'm in my ServiceNow instance. I will go to my favorite and your favorite table called incident. I'll go to the form view of this table and from here you have to right click on the header or you can click on this hamburger section and then at the bottom you would see copy sys ID. As soon as I click on this you would see a message that it has been copied to the clipboard. So I can just quickly show you how does it look in the description section if you can see here at the bottom. I will just paste the sys ID here and you would see this is the sys ID of this incident. Now moving on to the second way retrieving it through the list view. I will go back and leave this. Now I will right click on any of the incidents of which I have to retrieve the sys ID. For example, I have to retrieve for this. I will right click here and you would again see a similar button called copy sys ID. I will just copy this here. And you see it has been copied and I will now paste it here to show you how it has been copied. You can see here the sys ID has been copied now through the list view. Moving on to the third way which is retrieving the sys ID through the URL. What does that mean is if I click on this incident and if you see in the URL there is a parameter called sys ID and after that there are some digits. So you have to ignore percent 3D because that's the URL parameter. But after that, 
starting with zero for this particular record it may start with any number or a digit that is the 32 bit character sys id i can quickly show you this if i select this part from zero till c so this is the sys id and this could start with anything and end with anything so it might not be specific in your use case that it starts with zero and it ends with c and after this i will use the first way to get the sys id of this record again i will scroll down here and copy the sys id and i will paste it here and now we can see the sys id from both the ways is same so that means in the url and when we are using this hamburger option it always comes same because the sys id of this record will always be same you can retrieve it from anywhere you want the fourth way to retrieve the sys id of a record is through xml for that i will right click again on the header and i will click on export option and you would see there is a option of xml what it will do is it will download this records xml file and i will leave this because i had made some changes here the xml file has been downloaded i will open this and you can see this xml it has same incident record i can copy the incident number and show you and you can see the incident number here now we have to find the sys id of this record sys underscore id and we can see here it starts with zero and ends with c and it is similar to this record so this is another way to retrieve the sys id of a particular record through xml next way to get the xml of a record is through import method what i mean is i will go to the list view of this incident again i will right click on any of the headers and i will click on import and you will select update here so you just have to follow the steps blindly next you want to ensure this option is selected do you want to create an excel template finally you have to click on this create excel template what it will do is download an excel file which will have the sys ids of all the records so all 258 records which are present in my incident table so you have to be really careful using this method because if there are millions of records or even hundred thousands of records your system will definitely hang so this way is not a good way to do that but this is a way so i just wanted to show you that i will click on the downloads and open this in a new tab and now i will go to page one I will search for the sys id sys id and we can see in the last it has the sys id of each and every record in the incident table you can get the sys id of any record you want to look at now we will move on to the next way to retrieve the sys id and that is the pure developer way i will be using the client scripts i will go to the incident table again and i will create a dummy client script for this i will click on configure and go to client scripts and click on new if you are not familiar with client scripts in service now please click on the top right corner or there is a link in the description where i have given the basics of client scripts and their types i will name this client script as demo sys id and i will keep the type as on load i will scroll down and i will write an alert and you have to give the script here g underscore form dot get unique value and that's it i will put a semicolon in the end save this and then i will go to an incident so what does this line of code do is it will show me a pop-up whenever the form of the incident record loads let's open the incident in a new tab and i will open this record and you can see as soon as it opened it showed me the sys id of this record it starts with zero it and ends with c and you would see the similar thing here in the url similar to this if i open any of the incidents a pop-up will automatically come for all of them because i've put an alert on load moving on to the next way is using the server side scripts so this was client script now we are moving to server side scripts and if you know the server side scripts we use business rule i will again right click here on the header configure and i will click on business rules now i will create another business rule and i can name it say maybe demo business rule so whatever you want demo br sys id i will click on advanced i will give the condition to run this as after update so what we are trying to do is whenever i update anything on the incident record the sys id of that record should pop up on the top of the screen for that i will use gs dot add info message and current dot get unique value so the function name is 
same get unique value but the object which we are using is different in the client script and in the server script so here it is current and in there it was g underscore form i will save the after this i will go to an incident which we had already opened and for example if i change the short description here to 15 and save this we should get an info message with the sys id and this is the onload client script which came up and this is the message which we had shown on the top of the screen using gs.add info message and we can verify the sys id same as in the url and in here as well Let's move to the next way where we will be downloading a CSV file with the sys ID of the records. So for that you have to follow the steps as it is. First of all you have to open the list of whatever table you want the sys IDs of. So I am using this incident table you can use the problem table, change table or any table of your choice even the custom tables. And then we have to put a filter here and for example if I do it only for one record I will click on show matching. And we have only one incident because incident numbers are unique. After this, right click on this and open in new window. And in here, at the end of the URL, you have to paste this as it is. So this is a URL parameter which we will use to download the CSV file of that record or any number of records which you would have selected in the filter. I've copied that parameter. I will click here and I will paste it as it is and I will paste this parameter in the description as well. I'll click enter and a file download has been started and ended quickly because there was only one record. I will open this excel file and let's see if we have the sys id or not. Let's search for sys underscore id and you would see we have the sys id column and the sys id of that record is again starting with 08 and ending with c so we have the correct sys id of the incident. The next way is using the REST APIs. We can also fetch the sys ID of a record. So if you have the third party instance and they want to retrieve the sys ID of that particular incident or any record and they want to store it in their database maybe or maybe update the record based on that or maybe use it as a reference field to update any other table then they can use this particular method where we will retrieve the sys id of this incident and then it can be used further so let's go to rest api explorer to look at the api of the incident table i'll click here on rest api explorer and if you want to learn more about integrations in service now please click on the top right corner and i have the best videos there if you look here, the get API, this is the default table APIs of service now. And you just have to replace the name of the table here and the API is already ready. So you don't have to do anything. I'm in my postman. I have pasted the get API here and you can see it is the same as it was in the rest API Explorer. I have just replaced the table name with the actual table name. So that's the incident table and in parameters, I have to give parameter called number so that's the incident number and number is the backend name of the column where the incident number is actually stored and you would see it has automatically appended it with question mark and number equals to this incident number after this you have to give some authorization details of your service now instance so i have given the admin user and the password you can use your own user as well it's up to you and then you will have to click on send and it will return me all the field values of this record. I will control F and use sys underscore ID and you would see the sys ID is starting with 08 and ending with C. So that means we have the correct sys ID of this incident. And now for the bonus sections, there are three things. And if you have been sticking around till the last of this video, you will see all these three special things. The first one is how to search for a record using sys id globally not on a particular table so for example if you had opened this table called incident you can just go ahead and search the sys id of that particular table only you wouldn't be able to search the whole service now instance i will show you how to search for a sys id in all the tables and there are two other bonus things you would want to wait for let's see how can we globally search for a sys id for that you have to download SNUtils. So this is an extension provided. You can just go and Google it and download it on your browser and it is really helpful for the developer. So yes, you should go ahead and do that. I have activated SNUtils on my extensions and you can see this. In here, 
you have to type a command called sys underscore id and you would see here a small black box here you have to paste the sys id and the record will automatically open i'll click on enter it will open in a new tab and you would see the same incident has opened it will work for all of the sys ids on the particular instance which are opened in your browser so it's really easy to search for the sys ids across all the platform now the second bonus is how to add the sys id on the list view i will close this for example if i would want to add the sys id in the list view i wouldn't be able to find that field or that column here because service now has restricted that to add sys id on the list view but how do we do that we will go back to the application navigator and type system ui and under this we have to click on list and now i will search for the table name called incident so that's our favorite table and here the view should be default so i'm doing it for the default view you can do it for your own view if you want all the users will have their own default view so you have to be really careful so i'm logged in as system administrator so the default view of admin is different i will be changing the default view with no user so that's the actual default view and here we have few columns there are 11 columns here and i will add the 12th column called sys id you just have to give the sys id in the element and position as 11 and submit this and then we will go back to the incident list and i will click on all and then i would have to be really careful with two things first i will do cache dot do and if you were using the same default view it should appear here after refreshing the screen and if it doesn't come you will have to reset to your default view and only then it will come up i had my own personalized view and that's the reason it didn't came up here to reset to default view i will click on the personalized list option again and here you would see a button called reset to column defaults i will click this button and it will automatically refresh and if i scroll to the right in the last position that's the 11th position which we had mentioned there the sys id of all records will appear here and now the third bonus is how to add sys id on the form view right now you would see the sys id is not available on the form and to add any column you will have to go to configure and click on form layout and you can add the field of your choice there but if i try to search the sys id here i wouldn't be able to see the sys id because that's not available for that i will search for system ui scroll down and go to views after clicking on views i will search for the default view in the title and i will click the first record and in the related list i have to search for my table name incident let's go into this record and you would see here in the related list we have form sections you can select anyone which you want to where you actually want to insert that sys id field if you want to do it on the top you can do it here you can do it in the notes section related records or resolution information i will click on notes and then you would see the section elements in the related list and there are few fields here work notes obviously in the comments i will click on new and i will add that at the bottom so number eight element position here eight and the element would be sys underscore id and the type would be element if you notice the ui section here is notes already i will submit this i will again have to do cache dot do i'll go to an existing form i'll click on refresh and as soon as it refreshes in the notes section it should show me the sys id of this record and you would see here at the bottom it has added the sys id automatically and it is read only and it should remain in that same way service now has by default made that a sys id of a record should never ever change so be careful of this i know it was a long video but i think there was a lot of useful information in this so if you're liking my content please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button and share this video to someone who is new in service now and thanks for watching the video till the end